uh, Prof, did you see the cast for the upcoming Super Mario movie? How about Chris Pratt for Mario? Yeah, I saw that. Um, Sonic Graver and I were talking about this the other day. I, I don't... Even before the Chris Pratt thing, when they say they're going to remake the Mario movie, are they going to do an animated version of it, I think, or whatever? I don't know. I'm just not following it. Um, well, that's just stupid. You know, again, leave it alone. You're only going to mess it up, you know, in today's culture already. Just just leave it alone. You know, that's my first initial take. So then when I hear Chris Pratt uh, cast as it, I mean, I don't I don't understand. And you help me out. I'm really asking you. I don't understand. I, what's what's the what's the real why are people so up in arms that Chris Pratt was cast? Now, I don't necessarily like him for the role. I wouldn't have cast him myself, but but I don't see how, like, that's the line. Chris Pratt's the straw that broke the camel's back here for his casting. Is he going to do Mario without the accent? Or, I'd understand that. Is he just going to do Mario? Is, is, the, is the Italian accent problematic or something? Maybe. I could see that. Is he just going to, um, you know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I just... Uh, I like the Mario games, but uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm more like I'm already leery or, or against the idea of the movie coming out anyway. So the knowledge of Chris Pratt is cast. It's like, you know, so I just don't understand. But I've seen a lot of people talking about it, you know, so I'd like you guys to tell me. Um, let's see. I'm seeing some people here in the chat. Um, Nathaniel says it was a very odd casting choice, whereas in Tucker says, I think people are just upset that Pratt was cast rather than the video game voice actor who's been doing the role for 25 years. Okay, see? Here's some information I just didn't know, okay? I had no idea that the original voice actor was even still out there. Okay, I can get that. I can start to get that. No, I'm starting to understand some more of the outrage there. If, I don't know how old that guy is, but if he's um, if he's still able to, to, to do it, then yeah, that would be a problem. Um, yeah, I don't have anything against Chris Pratt personally either, Team Ghost Planet. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like him in general, you know. Uh, but but yeah, but I would understand that if the original voice actor was there. He's certainly, you know, he's the voice of Mario. <laughs> he's the one you think about when you hear, you know, in the in the commercials and little clips from the games or whatever. You know, he's the one. You know, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, thanks for thanks for the heads up and thanks for um. Let me know. Miss Miguel here is a follow up to a super chat. Says, I actually like the choice of Chris Pratt as Mario in the modern era. There's no way they would accept the Italian accent and would label it as racist. See, I'm 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 a little nah. I, I'm not willing to accept any non Italian accent. How is that racist? I get it that it's stupid. The modern era is dumb and they don't know what racist is, racism really is. But he's an Italian. He's a short little Italian plumber. Um, I mean, no. Who is it? Uh, I know the actor. I'm just blanking on his name uh, who played him in the live action movie that they did. Um, great actor, horrible movie, but great actor. Uh, yeah. I don't think he did a, a, an Italian accent. Obviously he's like a New York Italian or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, that's just always been the case for Mario. He's got the, it's a me Mario, you know, he's got that accent. So, um, so you can't do it without that. And I couldn't see Chris Pratt just doing Chris Pratt's voice. That'd be, that'd be ridiculous, but mark my words, mark my words. This is the way, culture is as soon as the movie gets a trailer as soon as the movie comes out or whatever people you look to the channels people who are flipping out about it right now are going to start saying you know it's actually it's actually good pretty good you know i actually kind of like because they just they need to like stuff they need to like new stuff they can't they can't handle they're not strong enough to be discerning um now i don't know anything about the movie it's possible that maybe it could fly through the radar like i was just saying that the, you know occasionally a movie might do or whatever I feel stupid saying it, but the, 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 the childish hope in me is hoping against hope that Ghostbusters Afterlife isn't garbage. But, uh, but, but you'd be silly, as I've said in videos, you'd be silly just to say, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hope for it. I'm going to be positive. I'm gonna, no, you don't have to automatically uh, be negative about it necessarily, but you can say Hollywood doesn't deserve my support. Hollywood has to prove to me now they have to put the movie out have it out for they they have to prove to you that you should come give this a chance gone are the days of well I'll just go see it and see what i like I, I can't know if it's good or not whether i see it no you can we're in a day and age long past that nonsense uh hollywood and with all their their bombs and all of their horrible behavior lately they they owe it to us to prove it prove why should we should give their nonsense a chance any film even if it looks like it might be good 
And uh, and so far, like for something like Ghostbusters Afterlife, as far as my knowledge, I'm not following the the uh, each and every press release of it. I don't think there's been any kind of release of news lately. But so far, OK, on track to prove it, you know, but you're not there yet. Keep proving it until the film released. And, I, and then, I, then I hear it from other people and I start to see it. And it looks like it checks out, you know, with the um, things I see about it and read about it and so forth. You know, you've got a lot of work to do, Hollywood. This is what I've said before. People just uh, just could not get back to Hollywood, could not get back to kissing Hollywood's butt fast enough after the the pandemic and everything. As soon as they uh, theaters opened back up or new movies started to be released again, people just couldn't get back to supporting those new movies fast enough. We had a wonderful opportunity. Hollywood was hurting that we really could have made them listen to us lost opportunity because people just had to go back and give things a chance or just i gotta be in the know i gotta know what that movie's like so i know what people are talking about on twitter no nathaniel says my beef is that illumination studios is animating it the people behind despicable me minions and sing yeah i can see that being a problem too yeah um i don't know like i said a lot of people ask me about it i i, I love the mario lore I, I really love that i mean you gotta love it it's it's like Japanese, you know, game uh, developers or whatever create this uh, this video game with an Italian plumber, primarily marketed to ultimately an American audience at some point. I mean, I know it was big in Japan too and everything. It's just uh, I don't know the big history of it, but I just think it's fascinating, and uh, and I love how something like that, some something something so bizarre like that caught on, you know, caught on this this fat little Italian plumber becomes a beloved hero that people love so much, not just through those couple of games or whatever. And I, and I know he kind of evolved from, um, from jump man in the, in the donkey Kong original donkey Kong games, you know, so he kind of evolved from that. He wasn't just created from scratch, you know, which I guess jump man was more like a construction worker. It seems like, you know, saving Pauline from, from donkey Kong or whatever, but with the development of the lore, you know, is, is Mario games upon Mario games and donkey Kong games upon donkey Kong games and whatnot happened it's cool to see I, i'm really a fascinated uh, i'm fascinated by mythologies as they develop like that and, and just kind of take on a life of their own because it happened during a time when the content creators would shape their content based on audience feedback now they don't do that at all now they say sit down shut up and listen we're trying to shape you audience with our content um, or that's not the way it should work. Their content should be shaped by the audiences, you know, in terms of reactions. And, and, and Mario is a great example of that. Star Wars was a wonderful example of that for the longest time. Uh, you know, as were Marvel and DC for the longest time, you know, but that, that's all gone now. It's all gone now. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad that I learned a little bit more about the Mario phenomena here from you guys. Uh, it's not something I've cared to follow as much, you know, I'm not going to rush, go rush to watch this movie. We don't need a Mario movie. I don't need a Mario movie. Um, put out another good Mario game, put out another game like uh, seven stars. You know, I haven't followed up. I, I was, you know, I enjoyed the Mario games, but I never followed them religiously or anything, but sound engraver ever since I got the retro box, she's been going through and replaying all the games that she played as a kid. And I really loved watching her play uh, Mario and the seven stars that, uh, that role-playing uh, RPG kind of storyline was really cool. And it kind of gave me a new appreciation for Mario. Put out another game like that, you know, <laughs> come on. I don't need a stupid movie, you know? So 